Michelin is a 100 plus year old French tire manufacturer. The Michelin brand is a staple brand name known for high performing tires on cars, planes, and even space shuttles. So why does the white chubby mascot have anything related to fine dining and one of the most prestigious designations sought after by chefs and food lovers alike? This is the story of the star, the Michelin star. The year is 1900. The concept of the automobile is in its infancy. These rudimentary machines competed against trains, bicycles, horses, and carriages as means of transportation, and the demand for the automobile was lukewarm at best, as there were fewer than 3,000 cars in France at the time. However, cars had one huge advantage, and that was freedom. Freedom to travel further than a horse, and freedom to go to places not on a rail line. This was a new concept for travelers, and one way for Michelin to sell more tires was to get people to drive more. Thus, Michelin created the Michelin Guide. The first copies of the handbooks were freely distributed to motorists, and they included maps, useful locations such as hotels and mechanics, as well as instructions on tire repair and replacements. These guides did not include restaurant listings until 1920, when Andre Michelin decided to charge for the handbooks after seeing his guides at a tire shop being used to prop up a workbench. The restaurant listings gained traction soon after, and a team of anonymous inspectors were hired to secretly review and rank dining establishments. The star system was introduced in 1936, with one star as a very good restaurant, two stars as excellent and worthy of a detour, and three stars as exceptional and worthy of a special journey. The reviews are based on quality, technique, personality, and consistency of the food. To contrary belief, the core and service quality has no impact on Michelin's review. Currently, there are 28 Michelin Red Guides in publication. They cover four continents and 31 countries worldwide, with Tokyo and Paris leading the pack as cities with the most Michelin stars received. The Michelin Guide has only recently expanded outside of Europe, publishing its first New York Guide in 2005 and Tokyo in 2007. These handbooks became instant sensations as 90,000 copies of the Tokyo version flew off shelves in the first 48 hours of sale. With popularity comes criticisms, and the Michelin Guide has a plenty. Readers often note that the guides being biased towards French cooking and catered towards bougie fine dining. This was mostly held true until the Asian guides were published, recommending $2 meals in Singapore and Hong Kong. The Red Handbook has also been criticized as corrupt, as it often receives millions of dollars from government tourism boards. Michelin doesn't see it this way, as it states that accurate reviews require a team of inspectors to visit and revisit an establishment while paying for services in full before coming to any conclusions. In 2011, the Financial Times has claimed that Michelin loses over $24 million a year on the guides alone. So why would Michelin continue to publish the guides while running on millions of dollars worth of deficit? For a company that had over $23 billion worth of revenue in 2016, $24 million is really a small drop in the bucket for them as the guide creates immeasurable brand value. The Michelin brothers were able to figure out how to sell products with homogenous features, in this case tires, by using storytelling and personality over a hundred years ago, and the company has continued this ever since. The handbooks didn't begin their lives in fame, but as workbench props. However, the Michelin brothers realized the consumer concept of you get what you paid for and adjusted their strategy by adding valuable consumer content that wasn't available anywhere else. People thought that the guide was much more valuable after being charged for it. This made their advertisement much more effective than plainly yelling at consumers, buy our tires. The Michelin Guide is an eloquent way of saying, hey, look at all these places that you could visit, as well as enjoy delicious foods with your car, 
and we sell tires too. The Michelin brothers initially set out to boost demand for their tires. To do this, they had to raise the demand of cars first, as well as increase the popularity of driving. They realized that to best sell their products was to sell the lifestyle of road travel, the freedom of picking up your bags and going anywhere, the fear of missing out on the greatest once in a lifetime dining experiences. In this process, they created an institution that's so well recognized and praised that world-class chefs like Gordon Ramsay compares to losing a Michelin star the same as to losing a girlfriend. Get out! Michelin's handbook not only created insightful information for travelers, but built immense brand awareness for their entire business. A simple web search for either Michelin or Michelin star yields interchangeable results regarding both fine dining and tires, intertwining the concept of high quality experiences to the Michelin brand name and their products. Thank you for watching an Urban Copy video series. If you found this video helpful, a like and a subscription goes a long way, and I will see you all in the next one.